everyone. It is time for another video about some of the wonderful books that I am reading for SPFBO, the self-published fantasy blog off. This is a contest started by Mark Lawrence in order to shed a light on some wonderful self-published fantasy. This is the ninth iteration of that contest, and I am so privileged to be a judge. In fact, I have encountered some fantastic stories that I am very excited to tell you about. Now, as a judge, I have had 30 books to read and whittle down to five semifinalists. And from those five semifinalists, I will pick my finalist, which will go up against the nine other finalists and we'll see who wins the entire competition from those 10 finalists. I have already made a couple videos where I have proclaimed a couple semi-finalists. The first was A Gamble of Gods, and the second was Bob the Wizard. And today I'm very excited to share with you my third semi-finalist. I've pretty much read all the books. I just have to make my final decisions. So the next two videos where I'm gonna talk about semifinalist number four and semifinalist number five will be out in successive weeks if all goes as planned. But now, let me tell you about some five fantastic reads. This was very difficult for me to pick uh, my semifinalist because these books are all really wonderful. A lot of love and time, you can tell. The author has put a lot of love and time into their book in each and every case. I am shocked at the quality of the books that I have been reading. It has been a really wonderful experience for me just to get a taste for how many great stories are out there and I am so happy to be shouting about them. I believe that each of the five books that are not going on to become a semifinalist will have a, a, a big audience out there, people who will appreciate these books. So I'm gonna do my best to describe each of them. And I fully advocate that you check them out. They are wonderful reads. They have, some of them have earned a ton of praise. Some have not yet been recognized for their quality. And I hope that they will be uh, perhaps a little bit at least as a result of this video. So let me talk about the five books that I enjoyed thoroughly and could easily have picked to be a semifinalist, but uh, I, I had to go with the one that stole my heart, which I'll be talking about last. I'll be talking about the semifinalist after I talk about the first of the, the five uh, books that are not going to be semifinalists, but are nevertheless excellent reads. So let's start with River in the Galaxy, an inner universe novel. This is by Natalie Kelda. And what we have here is a naval fantasy that is set in space. What a great concept. And Natalie Kelda delivers on it. At the heart of the story, though, is the protagonist who is suffering from the disappearance of his parents as well as the death of his best friend. Merlin is a study in grief and depression. And I must say that Natalie Kelda did a beautiful job of handling this difficult theme. Uh, it's just beautifully and sensitively handled. Wonderful job on that. I have found very few fantasies that deal with depression uh, as skillfully. Uh, but there is a found family of sorts among Merlin's crew uh, as they navigate their ship in a dangerous journey across space in the wake of Merlin's parents. Next, we have a book that deeply impressed me. It's called The Monsters We Feed, and it's a Lumina world story by Thomas Howard Riley. This is a fantasy noir. This is the definition, I think, of a fantasy noir uh, featuring a pro protagonist in Jathan who has some deep-seated prejudices against magic users due to some very personal trauma. Jathan and his sister are a wonderful pair who look out for each other, uh, but m a murder plunges Jathan deeper into the bowels of the city he thought he knew when he finds a tool for detecting magic. This is a gritty and very skillfully written book. I highly recommend it if you're interested in a fantasy noir. 
And next we have Sealed Empire. This is a book by Norbert, and I'm, I'm so sorry, Norbert, I, uh, I'm not going to pronounce your last name correctly. It is a Hungarian name. Uh, it is, uh, maybe I should just spell it. It's spelled Z-S-I-V-I-C-Z, Zvizic, something like that, maybe. I, I'm sorry for even trying, <laughs> but please forgive me, Norbert. Uh, but <laughs> it has been uh, translated from uh, the Hungarian by Tamas uh, Peters. Uh, and I, again, I'm probably mispronouncing that name. Uh, but at any rate, Sealed Empire is a medieval-inspired genre-bending fantasy with some very interesting science fiction elements. Very surprising and, I think, skillfully woven in there. Sir Edward is the uh, protagonist, and he embarks on an, um, uh, a very ambitious expedition to win the blessing, in part at least, of uh, Reverend Sven. Uh, he is the father of the woman that Sir Edward loves, who is Emma. And Emma is navigating the intrigue around the new king, Eric. In the meantime, Edward's expedition encounters something vast and world-changing. And this is a very great book that I, I strongly suggest if you're up for something a little bit genre-bending and uh, a great tale, just a great tale. Next, we have Little Secrets. This is part of the Bound by Blood series by Alice E. Johnson. Driven by rage and revenge, Harris Bearwood is a battle leader who inspires terror. The dark powers of a mysterious child pulled from the fiery destruction of a village in the midst of war may give him the edge that he needs in his quest, but she may also spell his destruction. This is a grim, dark fantasy. It is uh, labeled as such, uh, and I think I can agree with that definition. Little Secrets is a grim, dark fantasy that I feel deserves some love on Goodreads for whatever reason. Uh, it hasn't gotten uh, very much attention yet, uh, and it was, I believe, published this year, but earlier in the year. Uh, so it's a book I'd love to see if you're looking for a, a really compelling grimdark read. Uh, check out Alice Johnson's Little Secrets. And finally, for the, among the, the five wonderful reads that I was so privileged to uh, encounter on this uh, journey as a judge, we have The Mountain of Souls. This is book one of The Chosen by Marcus Lee. Uh, I must say that this is a very skillfully written and brutal fantasy featuring Melina, one of the children who are cruelly molded and indoctrinated into becoming soldier assassins of a sort. This is a very dark tale with some uh, cult-like elements, I would say. And I uh, also would say that the Mountain of Souls explores the struggle to preserve humanity in a very effective way. This struggle taking place amidst the great suffering that ambition and just the very the usual human flaws can inflict. Uh, so it is not YA uh, at all, but I think there are elements of the story that would probably remind many readers of The Hunger Games. But like I said, not YA. In fact, uh, it's pretty traumatic uh, in terms of what happens to the kids in this story. And you, you see that very early on. Very, very well written. Uh, I would say Marcus Lee is a, an extremely talented writer. And now I am extremely excited to tell you about semifinalist number three, which is Murder at Spindle Manor. It is a lamplight murder mystery by Morgan Stang. Now, I have so much to say about this. As I said, this one really captured my heart. Uh, compressed into one very intense night at one very atmospheric inn, Murder at Spindle Manor is what happens when you take something like an Agatha Christie or a Sherlock Holmes murder mystery, uh, some steampunk, a good dose of steampunk and or gas lamp fantasy, some seance, uh, ghosts, a witcher-like monster hunter, uh, a truly insidious and frightening skin-wearing and brain-sucking monster. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, it is a, a gloomy and bleak setting to chill the heart 
of any lover of spooky season uh, with some playful nods to uh, some of the greats of the genre like Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. Also a delightfully irreverent sense of humor and The Simpsons. Yes, I did just say The Simpsons. <laughs> and you throw all of that into the brain of an extremely talented writer. And then you get Murder at Spindle Manor. Uh, this, uh, this was a wonderful book. I, I read it in essentially two long sittings. Uh, and it made me laugh, which uh, is a really good thing because it also explores with some melancholy and pathos the existentialist anxiety that it, uh, many of us feel at various points in our lives, the ultimate isolation, uh, you could say, of the individual. And how we, all we can do really in life is uh, uh, feel like we are essentially deluding ourselves um, as we indulge in avoiding facing that isolation in a universe without intrinsic meaning. And that sounds a bit depressing, I know, <laughs> but this story beautifully offers, I think, a, a, an affirmative and a playful answer to that. Perhaps not conclusive answer, but something playful and affirmative, uh, something to make us laugh and help us get on with things, perhaps even carve out some meaning with the people who are around us. So that leads me to the characters in this story. Uh, they are vivid and quirky and wonderful and grotesque and pitiable and arrogant and most of all, flawed. This is a wonderful cast. Uh, I want to give a shout out though to Evie, one of my favorites who made me laugh the most. Uh, but the protagonist, I would have to say, the huntress, Isabeau Agarwal, is the most beautifully realized. And uh, she is more than just a vessel to explore the themes I mentioned. She feels like someone that I would want to befriend. I am extremely keen to read more in the Lamplight murder mysteries. I've discovered, I feel, I don't know, lots of people before me have, just, have read this book, but I feel like I've discovered a gem here. Uh, Morgan Stank is an extremely talented writer and I can't recommend this enough, especially now that it, it seems so appropriate that I happen to have read this uh, during spooky season. So if you're looking for an immediate, wonderful spooky season read, I, I cannot advocate this one enough. So please be on the lookout for two more of these videos. And in the last, the fifth, when I announce the semifinalists, I will announce the finalists as well. So be on the lookout for those and until next time.